You know, I will never forget the first day when I finally managed to install Ruby on Rails and started the server and uh, saw this Yayo on Rails screen. And then I created my first Hello World. And then I let my users log into the application. So in this uh, video, we're going to go through creating our first Hello World page. And we're going to let our users log in. And we're going to do it with the Jam device. Now, this is the most popular, I guess, uh, authentication uh, solution for Ruby on Rails. So uh, you see just on GitHub, it has over 400,000 repositories that use the gem. It's really, really massive. And it is really stable technology that hasn't really changed over the last uh, six to seven years. And again, you don't have to come up with a solution for user authentication on your own. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You should uh, preferably for security and for saving your own time, use an existing solution. So let's get started. Now you see, at the moment, I've got just a blank Ruby on Rails application. And let's say we'll want to add two pages. So the first page will be visible for users that are logged in. And the second page will be visible for users that do not uh, require to be logged in. So for everybody in the internet and for just logged in users, two pages. Now, first, let's name the first page. It will be something like home page. It will be visible by everybody. And you see, I go to slash home page in my URL and we get this no root matches get home page. So we would need to create a root with a get method that leads to slash home page. So for this, I would go to our config and here we have a file named roots. So I will type get home page. Let's try to do this. And uh, we see missing controller key on roots definition. Please check your roots. Okay, so we say get home page, but we did not uh, say what kind of controller we want to use. Now, Ruby on Rails is a model view controller framework, so we need to have a controller for this root. We can either use our application controller in app controllers application controller or create a new controller. So we will create a new controller named, for example, home controller, home controller.rb. And if we open application controller, we see a class application controller that inherits from action controller base. And in home controller, we're actually going to name it class home controller. And it is going to inherit from application controller. Okay. And inside we will have a page named the home page. It's actually going to be an action. So dev home page and end. Let's see if it works now. No, it doesn't. So we, we type get home page and we say need to say uh, from where we are going to get this home page. So we will say to, and if we'll try to get it from the home controller, uh, asterisk uh, home page, something like this. Let's see if this works. And yeah, so now we have a different error. And actually errors are good, and our errors are changing, meaning we are going in the right direction. So it is missing a template for the request. Now, a template would be a view. So we have uh, our app, and inside we have views. And we have our layout, and we're going to create a new folder in our views named home. And inside we will have a file named home page dot html dot erb and now i will refresh and let's see if we get anything okay you see we got a blank page so this blank page is uh, the blank page for our home page now let's actually add some kind of text hello world okay and you see it works we have our hello world right here so looks fine. And actually we can type any kind of HTML here. So it would be like a big header, for example, hello world. So works. And we can create one more page. It would be a dashboard page. Let's go to create a new file named dashboard.html.erb. It would also have some kind of content. So it would be dashboard. And for read, we would also need to go to our home controller and create an action named the dashboard. 
and in our roots we would type get uh, dashboard to the controller home action name dashboard now if we type uh, to home slash home page in both cases we are going to get uh, the home uh, the home page page you see we get hello world but uh, if we make it uh, get dashboard to home dashboard then we are going to get the view for the dashboard so it works and this way we can create static html pages in ruby on rails and now we can actually add authentication to our application so here we have the gem device and we can go to the getting started uh, chapter so we are going to add the gem device to our gem file where we keep all the external packages okay and run bundle okay we have installed the gem but it doesn't mean it already works we have to set it up so we'll need to type this command rails generate device install let's see what it gives us okay so it generated the a few files one is in config initializes device rb in this file we will have all the settings for device and the second one is the English translation for device uh, uh, for all kinds of uh, texts like you have been successfully authenticated or you have logged out or your confirmation of the password has been resent, something like this. So all the default uh, authentication texts. Now, it also gave us a few hints of what we need to do. So first of all, we will go to our config environments development RB. I'm going to config environments development RB. And here we need to add this config action mailer default URL options. Now it basically, what does it do? So for example, you want to uh, resend an email, uh, uh, you, you forgot your password, yeah. And uh, you type in your password, password and you want to uh, have the password uh, restoring uh, message to be sent to an email address. So it says that we can actually send emails to our local host. Next, we need to add a root page. So a default page that will fall back when we just go to the bare domain. So at the moment we don't have a root and we're going to add a root. You see, always when we go to the root at the moment, we go to this yay, you're on rails. So, Instead, we will go to our roots and say root will be a home home page, home controller, home page action. Now I refresh and you see it works. Okay, uh, going back, we need to add these two uh, lines, notice and alert. Basically, when uh, we log in or when we log out, there will be notices and alerts about a successful action or unsuccessful mm -hmm. action. So we will add this either in one of our views or in our layouts application HTML. If we add something in application HTML.erb, it means it will be available across all our other templates, across all our other views. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's uh, start the server. You see we've added the Two paragraphs one has a notice and one has an alert okay and uh, you see we still don't have any way to sign our users in let's uh, keep going so we have added action mailer default url options and now we need to generate a device nodal now we will have a database where we keep all our user records so we are going to have a table in the database named users. A user has an email, a password, and so on. And we are going to type rails generate device, and the model is going to be user. So we will type rails generate device user. Now, if you want to name all the users as admins, for example, you can type rails generate device admin. For now, we have a user. So rails generate device user. And it created a few files. First of all, it created a migration. If we go to DB, migrate, we have this new migration. The migration means that we are going to add a new table. Uh, here you see create table to the database. And the user is going to have an email, 
an encrypted passcode and uh, a few additional fields like reset password token, reset password sent at, and remember created at. And also each user is going to, of course, by default have uh, the creation date and the last updated date. Okay, what else did this generator create? It created a new model in app models named user.rb. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to models, user.rb, and here we have a user model that uses device. Mm -hmm. And also it created the roots for device. So if we open our roots, you see it added device for users. Now it's really good to keep your device roots somewhere on top of your roots uh, folder. Uh, roots file. Okay, so looks cool. Now, uh, is there anything else we need to do? They're going to type rails db migrate. Okay, and now let's start our server. So I'm restarting the server, and you see there on the hello world page, if we go to home page, it works. If we go to dashboard, it also works. And you see in our roots, we've added a few roots. It means uh, a few roots for device users, meaning if we go to slash roots, we should be able to see them. And here we have the device roots that were just added. So we have a new user session path that would lead to users sign in, for example. Let's try to go to this path, slash users slash sign in. And you see, it brings us to a page that is hosted by device, where we have this uh, login uh, view, and we can input an email, or we can uh, have a few links to sign up or to log in. Now let's create an account. I'm going to create an account with an email, a password, and password confirmation. And here I pressed sign in, and it says, welcome, you have signed in successfully. Now where do we get this welcome from? We get it from our application html.erb view. Here we have these two notifications, notice and alert. So this is either a notice or an alert. So it says that we have successfully authenticated, but uh, how can we know that we are currently lo logged in? Yeah, so how can we know that we are currently logged in? Actually, device provides a few methods. We can check the user signed in, we can check the current user. So let's try to do this. Now, we can go to our, for example, application html.erb, and here, uh, so that it is visible on all the other pages, we can see if the user is signed in. They're going to open the erb braces and type user signed in, close the braces, and we will get a true or false. You see, now it is true, so the user is signed in. And we also have this current user method, and we can also type it. So if we type current user, what will we get? We get the object of the user and we can actually type in his email. So if the user is sent in, yeah, we have the user's email, looks good. And we can actually get not only the email, we can get the ID, we can get when he was created and so on. So anything that we keep about the user in the database at the moment. To see what we keep about the user in the database, we have this schema.rb with all the columns that we keep in the database for the user. Yeah, <laughs> okay, looks good. Now, what if we want to let our user log out? Well, device also provides an, uh, a solution for this. If we go back to our roots, we will have this destroy user session path and the method should be delete. So we are going to create a link for the user to delete his session, to basically sign out or log out. Now going back to the uh, page, where was it? Application HTML ERB, they're going to have a new link. It will be a link to log out the path is going to be destroy user session path. The method was going to be destroy, so method. And I guess that's it. Let's see if it works. Okay, we have this log out button. Let's press the button. And it gives us node root matches post user sign out. Okay, I must have made a mistake. Let's go back.
didn't work. Oh, actually it should be method delete, not destroy, right. Let's go back, refresh and press log out. Okay, and now we get another error, undefined method ID for nil class. So now we logged out and we don't have a current user and we're trying to find an ID of a current user that's why, of which uh, we don't have. That's why we get undefined method ID for nil class. So we can actually uh, try to see the current user's ID only if the user is signed in. So we would add an if statement here. If user is signed in, then show us please the current user ID. Okay. And now you see we have logged out successfully. It says so, signed out successfully, and we still have this log out button. Now we don't want to see the log out button if we are logged out. So we're going to make it this way. If the user is signed in, we see the user's ID or the user's email and otherwise, so else, we will see the link to log out. So we have this block, if user is signed in, current user email, else log out button. No, 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 no. We should see log out button if the user is signed in right, else we'll have something else else we'll have a button to let the users sign in. We will have a link to sign in or to create an account. So log in or uh, sign up. And what are the paths going to be? Let's have a look in our rules. The paths are going to be new user session path to log in. Now we don't need the method delete anymore. And to sign up, we would have something like new user registration path. New user registration path. Okay, let's see if this works. Going back, we have these two buttons, log in and sign up. If I go to sign up, we have the sign up form. And for the log in, we have the log in form. Looks cool. So I will log in. And now I see the current user's email and the button to log out. And what if the user wants to delete his account or to change his email address or password? Well, device also provides a default solution for this. If we once again go to our roots, there is uh, something like edit user password path or edit user registration path. Let's see what it does. Let's add a link to this. So we will have a link to uh, Profile settings, something like this, or account settings. And it is going to lead to edit user registration path. Let's refresh and see if it works. Going back to our application root. Okay, we have the button account settings. And if we click it, we see we can change our password, we can uh, delete our account, or we can go back to the root path. So this kind of works. Now, when we are logged in, we have our current user's email address, the button to log out, and we see the account settings. Otherwise, we don't have the current user's email, we have the log in and sign up buttons. Looks quite nice. And one more thing. If we go back to the device documentation, we have this before action authenticate user. Now you should add this in the controllers or for actions that require an authenticated user. So for example, if we add this before action authenticate user into our home controller, just on top, I will say before action authenticate user, meaning that any action in this uh, controller will require an authenticated user. So to see the home page or to see the dashboard, we need a user to be authenticated. Now you see, whenever I go to the root path, that leads to the home page, or if I go to slash uh, home page, or if I go to slash uh, dashboard, it automatically redirects me to the path to log in. And it says you need to sign in before continuing. So this kind of uh, filter that only sign in users can see the pages works. But what if we want to let our users uh, see one page and not see another page? So we can actually skip the before action authenticate user. Now, a good approach would be to add the before action authenticate user 
on the application level. So everything requires an authenticated user, but in some cases, you can skip this before action. So we would say skip before action, authenticate user in the home controller, meaning in the application controller, everything in the application requires an authenticated user, but in the home controller, we skip this filter. So let's try once again. I'm going to go to slash uh, uh, just the root and we see hello world. We'll go to home page and it works. You see, it doesn't require a signed in user. We go to dashboard and it doesn't require a signed in user either. But let's make it so that the user has to be signed in to view the dashboard. So I would actually add the skip before action, authenticate user only for home page or accept dashboard. I would say something like only include home page. So we are skipping the before action only for home page, meaning home page uh, should uh, not require a current user, but dashboard will require a current user. Now I will refresh and you see from dashboard, I was redirected to sign in. But if I go to home page, or if I go to the root path, I don't require a current user. So these are the very basics of using the gem device. And uh, you don't have to really bother a lot about all the strategies of uh, how to actually make users authenticate in the application. It just works. It works perfectly. Thanks for being with me.